is always seeking to make sure that the one whom it loves is happy. Amen. That the one whom it loves is in perfect health, spiritual health, mental health, emotional health. Learn to love people. Love people with your dressing. Amen. Amen. Love people with the way you dress. When you are dressing, think about people. Amen. It looks good on you. But what about my sister? What about my brother? If I'm coming to church, for example, for an encounter, or if uh, I've made a covenant, for example, with the Holy Ghost, just like Job did, that my eyes should not behold the naked virgin. And I'm trying all I can in partnership with the Holy Ghost to make sure that even my thoughts are pure. Why should I be the reason why somebody else now begins to struggle? Amen. Is anybody saying don't dress nice? No. Dress nice with reason. Hallelujah. Dress nice in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Allow the Holy Ghost to look at you and approve your outfit before you leave your house. Before you leave your room, for those of us that stay in the hostel, amen. He's your brother, but he's not your brother. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's not. If he was really your brother, when he comes to propose, you will not accept his proposal. Amen. amen. So, dress with reason. Dress in love. Don't just think about your comfort. Think about the comfort of the other person. The person who you are going to visit. The person who you are going to see. The people you are going to meet on the way. Why should somebody begin a fast just because of you? Amen. Why should someone feel like they can't come into the presence of God just because of you? Amen. You want to dress with love. You want to dress with love. Love for your brother. Love for your sister. Amen. 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 So you want to love people. You want to have the right understanding of relationships the right understanding of marriage, the right understanding of love. Sometimes it's because of the wrong understanding of love that you see people do crazy things. Some of the things when I hear them, I can't even believe them. When somebody says, if you love me, you sleep with me. Amen. But well, I've left those uh, lies behind in the 19th or 20th century. I don't know what century we are, but the one before this one. Amen. Amen. Some of those things, I don't know. Sometimes when I hear them, it sounds very strange. Hallelujah. When you want to have the right understanding of love, you want to have the right understanding of relationships according to God's standard, not according to your relationship expert on YouTube. Amen. But according to God's standard. Amen. I wanted us to speak briefly on identifying on some of the things that are important, seeing as uh, some of us are in the place where we begin to have relationships, we begin to look towards marriage. Amen. I wanted us to look at some of the things that are really important, you know, for guys and for ladies to look for in prospective spouses. Amen. Amen. It's a message. It's not the first time it's been preached, but I want us to just look at a few things. A few things. So the first part is for the ladies. Things that you should look for, things that should be important, are the first things you want to 
tick. The first things you want to make sure that even as you are crushing the idea, amen. Hallelujah. I was watching a video recently. Somebody said, was saying about ladies shooting their shot. Please, before you are shooting your shot, want to look at some of the things that you want to make sure are there before you shoot wrongly. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What is important? Aside from your own personal, you know, list of things you would like, what is important, you know, even in that list, like what should be at the top, seeing as uh, it is not really possible to find someone who meets every single one of your criteria. Some of us have five-page lists. The things we are looking for, we can write book on them. Amen. Amen. Some of us, our list is not here. <laughs> I like, I don't know who said, the, some, of the, some of us, the kind of people we are looking for, eh, it's only Jesus that can satisfy us. Amen. Amen. The things we are looking for in people, in human beings, only Jesus can meet those needs. Amen. And even if Jesus was to marry us, we'll be the ones that will be complaining. Hallelujah. Because it will be too spiritual for us. Amen. Leave you and spend three days. Not, no looking back. Hallelujah. So uh, the first thing, the first thing that should be at the top of your list, I speak to the ladies now, the first thing should be someone who is God-fearing. Hallelujah. It seems like, uh, you know, something that is very obvious. Until you begin to hear some people ask questions. Like, is there anything wrong with marrying a Muslim? Amen. Is there anything wrong with... I mean, he loves you. If he really loves you and is someone who respects you, is there really anything wrong with marrying someone from another faith. Amen. When I say God-fearing, I'm not just saying that the person should be saved. Hallelujah. Not just that the person should be saved, but someone that fears God. They are two very different things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are people who are saved but don't fear God. There are people who are saved that used to fear God but don't fear God any longer. Amen. And at some point, you don't know whether they are still saved. You want to make sure that he is someone who fears God. I want us to go to the book of Psalm, Psalm 112, verse 1 and 2. Hallelujah. It says, praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who reverences God, who greatly delights in his commandments. His offspring will be mighty in the land, and his generation will be blessed. Go back to verse 1. It says, the man who, blessed is the man who fears the Lord. Going on to explain what he means to fear God, who greatly delights in his commandments. What it means to reverence God, or what it means to really, what it means really to fear God, is to place his opinion and his word above everything else in your life or outside of it. Hallelujah. It means that if, for example, where you are from, it's a common thing to beat your wife. Hallelujah. There are places in Africa, I don't know about outside Africa, but there are places in Africa where it's common practice. You know, they believe if you are married to somebody, you need to beat her once so that she can respect you. Hallelujah. There are people that there are places that really believe that. 
What does it mean to fear God? It means that if you really believe that and you come to the place, you begin to study scripture and you begin to find a contrary opinion to what you believed. To reverence God and to reverence his opinion is to lay down your own willingly and take it once you find it. Hallelujah. You want to be sure that whoever you are even considering is someone who fears God. Not just someone who comes to church. Not just someone who is in a department. But somebody that fears and honors God's opinion. Amen. Somebody who is not afraid to be wrong as long as God can be right. Amen. Somebody who is not too proud to, have to be wrong as long as it means God is right. Amen. The second thing is someone who is submitted to an earthly authority. Amen. Not to God in heaven. Somebody who is submitted to an earthly authority, meaning somebody you can see or talk to. When we were speaking last week about uh, ways of protecting yourself from sexual immorality, one of the things we mentioned was having mentors and having people that you can be accountable to and people that you respect and you obey and you honor and you can listen to. People who can call you in line. You want a man who is submitted to somebody. There's somebody you can see and someone you can talk to. Someone that he honors and respects and can listen to. Hallelujah. Somebody that can call him to order when it's necessary. The Bible says, uh, wives, submit to your husbands in all things. Amen. Submission is a commandment. It's not a when you feel like it's thin. It's not a when it's convenient thin. Hallelujah. Before you submit to someone, you want to make sure that the person you are submitting to is worthy of your submission. It's someone that if you should submit and you need someone to call him in line, there's somebody you can listen to. Amen. There's somebody he listens to. Not that he has a pastor, but somebody he listens to. Not everybody that calls pastor, pastor is really his. Is really being pastored by him. Amen. And the truth is that not everybody who comes to church has really received the person who stands here as their pastor in a way that means that they honor their opinion or they respect their opinion or they are willing to bend their opinion to suit it. Hallelujah. So you want somebody who is submitted to an earthly authority. We've spoken about the third thing already. You want someone who is passionate about you. Hallelujah. I want us to go to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 31. Hallelujah. Somebody who is passionate about you. We already know what the book of Proverbs says. Uh, we've read Proverbs 31 a lot of times. But I want us to go to the book of Proverbs 31 verse. Proverbs 31. Verse 29. Hallelujah. I'm going to quickly read. Before this part, uh, we're very, very familiar with what comes before. Speaking of the virtuous woman. Speaking of the virtuous woman. Speaking about our characters and all that. But it comes to the end and it says in verse 29. It says, many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Hallelujah. This is a husband speaking of his wife. It says, many women have done excellently. Many women are prettier than you. Many women are better at business than you. Many women can cook better than you. 
Many women can dress nicer than you. It says, but you surpass them all. You. Hallelujah. Many women are prettier than you. But you are my wife. Hallelujah. You, you are my own. Amen. There are many women that can cook better than you. But I've made a commitment and I've decided that you, everything that I need, I can find in you. Amen. In every way I need, you can fulfill me. Hallelujah. You want someone who can say this boldly of you. Amen. Someone who can really, really sincerely declare that there be many women who can be more spiritual than you. But you are the one that I have chosen. And it doesn't matter if in 20 years there are many women. I might not be able to see them now. But even if in 20 years there are many women who are prettier than you, you will still be the one I've chosen. Hallelujah. Amen. You want to be sure you can say that about the person that you are planning to get married to, even as a guy. Amen. And really believe it. Because there are always people who are prettier. You always meet people who are more spiritual. You always meet people who can make more money. You always meet people who can cook better. Hallelujah. If those reasons are the reasons why you are marrying the person you want to marry, when you find the one that is better, hallelujah, it's only God that will keep you. Amen. So uh, you want to marry someone who is passionate about you, ladies. You want to marry someone who is responsible. Amen. Speaking about someone who is passionate about you, you want to marry somebody who is not afraid to honor you. Someone who is not afraid to recognize you. There's this thing that uh, not someone who, for example, you cook for him and his friends. You are dating him. And they say, the food is nice. And you say, that's how it is. You know women now. Hallelujah. Amen. Or someone you cook for. And the person cannot even say anything about the food. Hallelujah. Nothing. Amen. Don't even wash the plates. Like, you cannot say anything nice. Like, there's nothing that ministers to you in that cooking. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Some things you want to really, really... I remember growing up. And you know, there are some places you go to. And I've heard some of these things before. That's why I can, you know, give them as examples. Because some places, you remember when you're growing up, you go somewhere and then they will compliment. You go and then your father <laughs> will be like, ah, this food is nice. Your husband will be like, mm, you know now, women, we are very good in the kitchen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You want to marry someone who is proud of you, someone who is not afraid, or someone who is uh, not too proud to be able to give you honor when it's due. Hallelujah. Someone who can sweet talk you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Someone who is responsible. I don't think that needs explanation. The Bible says that any man who cannot provide for his house is worse than an infidel. Amen. Even if you are any money. Hallelujah. Amen. Even if you are any money. Somebody cannot say, the person you are dating cannot say, or someone you are married to, or you are about to be married to, can never, one time, just say, this is your hair. Hallelujah. Finish the sentence. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> when you want to make your hair next. Hallelujah. That's not the rema. Amen. <laughs> Cannot say it once. Ah, when you want to make your hair next. 
let I have it covered. Hallelujah. Amen. When the Bible says that the man is the head of the house and that uh, the woman should submit to him as the head. You have to read it what it means, uh, understand what it means to be the head. Amen. Amen. There are responsibilities as the head. If you are coming to marry somebody from her father's house, hallelujah. It means at that moment you begin to take responsibility for her. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's what the Bible says. It says that she will leave her father's house, she cleaves to you. So, if her father was feeding her, Amen. Amen. You feed her too. If her father was clothing her, you clothe her too. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean uh, as a lady that you don't do anything. But the person you are about to get married to should be able to say, ah, when was the last time you bought a pair of shoes for yourself? Amen. I feel like you deserve a new pair of shoes. Within reason, of course. Hallelujah. I'm not saying demand it every week. I'm saying within reason. Even without being told. Even without being told. Hallelujah. Amen. You want someone who is responsible enough. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We'll keep that one. Hallelujah. Okay. So now for uh, the men. What should you look for in a woman? What kind of woman should you be looking at before all the other things you want to add from your personal list? The first thing is the same thing. You want someone who is God-fearing. Someone who fears God. I remember uh, it's something I've said many times. If you're close to me, it's something I've said many times. I cannot visualize I cannot see any future possible where I cannot marry somebody who I have to drag to church hallelujah I cannot marry somebody who I have to be reminding that it's time for service amen hallelujah and this is both for guys and for ladies. You want someone who fears God. You want someone who delights in God's presence. You want someone who can motivate you to press more. You want someone who can push you to be better. You want someone who can look at you and say, there's something strange about your prayer today. Hallelujah. When was the last time you prayed? Come, let's pray. Amen. Amen. Someone who can look at you and be like, every day I've seen you this week, you have been eating. Which day are you fasting? Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody that can tell you, you have been coming with this same revelation for the past two weeks. What's happening? Is God not saying anything new? Amen. You want someone who pushes you to be better, to press deeper into God, to find more of your purpose in God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So someone who is God-fearing for the guys, you want a lady who is God-fearing. You want a lady who fears God. When you fear God, there are some things you can't do. You deal with a lot of things from the beginning. Someone who, just do, who doesn't just go to church, but reverences God. Hallelujah. So we've spoken about that. You want someone who is submitted at all times. Somebody who is able to submit. Amen. Hallelujah. Speaking to the guys now, you want to marry a lady who can submit at all times. And you'll be able to tell by the examples of the relationships in her life. The men to whom she submits. Her pastors, for example. You'll be able to tell. Amen. So somebody who doesn't submit just when it's convenient, when Pastor has something nice to say. But the time that he doesn't have something nice to say, or the time he has to hold you accountable, all of a sudden it's no more convenient for you. Amen. 
You want to marry somebody who is able to submit at all times. You want to study the person. Look at the relationships in her life. Look at the men that she submitted to. And is she really submitted to them? Does she submit only when it's convenient? Amen. Hallelujah. You know, even as we look at these things, you are supposed to be looking as, from the perspective of the guys and the ladies, you want to know what you need to be working on. For those of us who are not yet uh, close to marriage, you want to know what you should begin to work on. What areas are you deficient in? Hallelujah. You want to marry someone, for the guys, you want to marry somebody who is who can make sacrifices and who is hospitable. Someone who can make sacrifices when it's necessary. Somebody who can be patient. Somebody who can understand, for example, that in this season we are going through a financial crisis and as such I cannot buy as many pairs of shoes for you as I would like. But irrespective, I'm still going to stand with you. Amen. You want to marry somebody who is who can see the end game. Somebody who can see far. Somebody who is not caught up in the present. Amen. Somebody who is able to see long term. Amen. Somebody that is considerate and even and doesn't make you feel less than you are, even when you are not able to do as much as you can. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you want somebody who can make sacrifices. Who can make sacrifices? Someone that is hospitable. Who it's not the one if you come and visit the person. Hallelujah. It's fine. Amen. So you want to make somebody, you want to marry someone, you want to keep someone in mind who has proven that when it's necessary, they can make sacrifices for you. Someone who can say, you need so so and money for so so and so investment. I have it. I can give it to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And he doesn't take anything away from them. And he doesn't make them respect you less. Hallelujah. And he doesn't make them look down on you. Amen. And lastly, and least importantly, any other physical thing. If you like people who are tall. You see the order in which we spoke about these things. Amen. I spoke about before marrying what you want. Amen. But you can see in the order of priorities, there are things you should consider before you consider, is the person tall? Uh, is the person fair enough for me? How long is her hair? Can she cook? Does she wear wigs? Amen. Hallelujah. We're not saying it's not important. It's just in the scale of importance, you want to place it at the correct place. You don't want to make it the most important thing before the things that are really important. Amen. Amen. I want us to be on our feet. Hallelujah. We're just going, thank you so much. We're just going to pray. You're going to ask God for wisdom. You're going to say, Father, please give me wisdom. Wisdom to seek wisdom even more. Wisdom to read books. Wisdom to listen to messages. Wisdom to practice the things that I'm learning, even starting from now. Yeah.